All right. Good evening, everybody. Uh, welcome to tonight's Planning Committee B. Uh, my name is Andy Crump. I will be chairing tonight's meeting. Uh, before we start, can I ask everybody to switch their phones either to silent or off, please? Um, because it is quite disconcerting to be in full flow and then suddenly the great escape suddenly appears in the background. Yeah, sometimes the councillors would wish for a great escape, but unfortunately they've got to stay to the end of the meeting. Um, so if you could do that. And also, could I ask um, members of the public not to inter interrupt when members of the uh, speakers are speaking. Again, however tempting it might be, only people who are registered to speak can speak here tonight. Thank you. Uh, sorry about that. Sounds a bit patronising, sounds a bit school teachery, and it sounds like I'm talking to my children, but it's not meant to be like that, so apologies if it's come across like that. Um, I'd like to introduce the top table. Caroline Nash, Committee Administrator. Major National Legal Services. Karen Tate. I'm the planning manager for tonight's meeting. My role is to provide impartial advice, to clarify any planning issues that arise, and to assist members' decision taking. I'm bound by the Royal Town Planning Institute Code of Professional Conduct. Planning committee members are not bound by advice from officers or by their recommendations. Matthew Coyne, senior planner. Uh, move on to our first item on the agenda, which is apologies for absence. Apologies received from Councillor Mills and from Councillor Juned. And no substitutes. Now again, I think we'd have to make sure if we can try and get substitutes when people are not available. Obviously tonight we'll call it, but it does always help. So if we can pass that message back to groups, that would be good. Thank you. Right, item two, disclosure of interest. Have members any items of, to disclose? No? That's going swimmingly tonight. Minutes. The minutes of the meeting held on the 25th of April. Um, I hope you've all read them. You're happy for me to, to sign them, all those who are here? <laughs> I don't know whether anybody else was here. Catch the fielding. Yeah, yeah, I'm happy with them. Yeah, yeah brilliant. So, yep, thank you. We'll ask on those at the end of the meeting, Caroline. Yeah, no, that's fine. Yeah. Super duper. And now we'll move on to our first plan application, which is 18 slash 0002218 FUL, Oldborough Barn, Stratford Road, Loxley Warwick. Installation of a standalone of a standalone solar panels of a stand <laughs> of standalone solar panels. I've got an extra array or too many panels on surface parking area. Dimensions: height two meters, depth two point one meters, width six point four. Is this you, Matthew? Yeah. Matthew will present to this. Thank you. Thank you, Chairman. Uh, the application site is at uh, old. Old Brabarn, uh, which is situated to the east side of the Stratford Road. Uh, it's indicated by the, the black dot in the centre of the screen there. Um, it's sort of on the road that connects Loxley through to Stratford Ponaven. So the red line here indicates the site. Uh, so you've got a public right of way to the north uh, with access leading it off the main road. Uh, you've got a dwelling to the uh, sort of within the centre of the site as well as to the south. Uh, just to note that the names of the dwellings on this plan are the wrong way round. So there's Oldborough Barn and Oldborough Farm. Uh, they're the wrong way round. It was shown on the next plan. Uh, so this is the sighting of the, the solar panels. It's indicated by that red dot, uh, the red square just here. Um, it's just to the north of the application site. Uh, so this is the proposed plans and elevations for the uh, solar array. Uh, so it's 12 panels in total in sort of one unit. Uh, like you say, it's 6.4 by th sort of 3.1 metres. Um, this is just a, a view of the site looking from the access point towards where it's going to be sited. Um, it'll be sited on that sort of gravel area just next to the barn there. Uh, some more photos. Yeah, again, the, the sighting sort of in this area here. Uh, this is the access uh, looking back towards the road. 
Uh, this is just an example of, of the type of array that would be used in this location. Uh, yeah, apologies for the blurriness of that photo, but that's looking from the sort of the access road towards the site. Uh, you can see there's a bit of a hedgerow along the boundary here, um, and then that continues sort of around the, the sort of the back end of the site. Sort of that gravelled area there is where the array will be going. Okay. So the, there's a detailed assessment of the application starting on page 11 of your agenda pack. Uh, it's re recommended for approval, subject to the conditions set out on page 14. Thank you very much. Um, no updates, is there? No updates. Thank you. Uh, we'll now move on to our first speaker, which is Mr. Justin Whitehorn. Good evening, Mr. Whitehorn. You've got three minutes. Um, would you like a warning with about 30 seconds to go? S sorry? Would you like a warning with about... I'm sure I'll be much quicker than three minutes. Okay, far away already. Hopefully, hopefully you can hear me. Yes, thank you. Uh, thank you for giving me the opportunity to speak on behalf of my application. I would like to erect a solar system as my contribution in helping our country become carbon ne neutral. Councillor O'Donnell has raised an objection on behalf of neighbours for impact and boundary issues. The impact of the solar system would be no greater than having vehicles parked in the area, in fact, the impact would be far less than having a mobile home uh, there. In order to reduce any impact, I'm prepared to move the installation further to the um, boundary on the western side to take advantage of the hedge, which will provide some more screening. It should be noted that the installation could only be seen from two of the neighbours' windows on the first floor. One of those windows, is, I think, relates to a bathroom. As far as boundary issues are concerned, the installation is within the area registered with Her Majesty's Land Registry as belonging to me. Thank you. Thank you very much. Councillor Barnes. Uh, the nearest property, is that the adjacent to the, or oh, how far is it like? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. We can't, I couldn't, um, So we've got three, three or four properties here, yes? Three properties. Right, and where is the, the panel, the small panel going? There. On there, over. Yes, okay. Building? Um, does the house go right back to the, the, the back boundary, or is that um, just the sort of a... What that square part there on, on the t top of the drawing, that relates to an old tennis court which is no longer there. So the, ho the house is... The house is the one it, which is it, yes, that's the house there. So you're putting the, the, you're putting the, building, the panels next to the old tennis court, let's call it that easy. Uh, yes, basically. And so who would be overlooking you? The other side of the road? Um, the um, Oldbrook uh, Farm, which is the, the property down to the south, where there's a orange dot. And that's the only one that ever looked at. Yeah. Thank you. Any further questions? No? Thank you, Mr. Whiteon. You're free to go. Thank you. And our next speaker is Councillor O'Donnell. when you're ready, Councillor O'Donnell. Thank you, Chair. Good evening, Committee. Um, well, this is a slightly different situation to normal for me because I actually support both parties. I've liaised with Justin, the applicant, regarding the dimensions of the solar panel when he was struggling with planning and know he is keen to reduce his carbon footprint. I also know him for the parish council. Piers, I met briefly whilst he was actually litter picking, so another valued member of our community in Loxley, and he raised his concerns with me regarding the location of the solar panel. As I live a stone's throw from the site, I'd really appreciate your thoughts regarding the application. My one plan, well, there's two planning considerations, actually. Given that Oldborough Farmhouse dates between 1500 and 1700, is AS10 and the impact of the solar panel 
will have on the character and the local landscape and its impact upon the occupiers of the neighbouring properties. The panel will be seen from bedrooms and the bathroom, which currently enjoys an uninterrupted view across the fields where it's rumoured that Shakespeare poached. It will also, I've been informed, be seen from the living room and the kitchen. Also, NPPF suggests that decisions should be sympathetic to local character and history, including the surrounding built environment and landscape setting, whilst not preventing or discouraging appropriate innovation or change, so perhaps thinking about just the location of the panel rather than the concept of the panel itself. From my understanding, and I take your advice regarding whether this is planning or civil, there has been some concern regarding thinning of the trees and hedges between the two properties and whether this had been agreed or not. Um, they note that the, they will see the solar panel as they open their front door, albeit through the fence and foliage of Oldborough Barn. Now, unfortunately, Piers and Amanda have not registered to speak in time, so I will proceed to raise their concerns with their full permission by reading out their statement. Okay. Um, we would like to raise serious concerns and objections regarding the following planning issues and material considerations which we have regarding the application. The adverse impact of the very large proposed solar panels on the view directly in front of our house, they'd be visible from the living room, front bedroom and bathroom and kitchen. And Obra Barn um, parking runs the full length of the front of our house and beyond over 29 metres in total and within 4.9 metres of our front door. In addition, the boundary wall is actually in the wrong place to our disadvantage as the original deeds show which only came to light recently. Obra Barn effectively has a strip of our land, a minimum of one. 0.8 metres increasing to 2.5 metres on the whole of the 29 metre boundary. Regardless of the boundary issue, the view from the front would have a much less of an issue if our neighbour hadn't cut down all the bushes and trees along that party wall last summer, or nearly all of them, against our wishes, as we feel it's seriously reduced our privacy. And all of these trees and bushes were on the disputed strip. We now argue that these trees and bushes are now dying due to the reduction of water supply as the area has been tarmacked by the applicant. We argue we were not in agreement with the work being done on our shared boundary. Regardless of the boundary issue, though, and the view from the front of the house, all of the Old Brabant parking area is directly visible from the main road, and as you turn into our driveway, the solar panels would therefore be completely visible from the main road, and then all the way up the length of the idyllic tree-lined driveway to our property. We have been at considerable pains over the years to maintain and renovate the rural and original look of the farmhouse dating back to the 1700s where we live. Replacing the roof, we used original tiles, we renovated the original mullioned windows and maintained the exposed roof beams and internally large walk-in fireplace as well as the farm well. At a minimum, we would suggest that placing the solar panels out of sight of the main driveway in the front of our house, i.e. at the back of Olber Barn, would enable the character of this special property to be maintained. We argue that loss of outlook overbearing impact and loss of privacy need to be considered and points one to three need to meet a substa subjective standard of material harm and we feel that all of the three qualifying objections meet that standard we would suggest that you do a site visit thank you very much any questions for the ward member i must say before we do go on that boundary issues are not planning issues they're civil matters, aren't they? Yep. So, boundary issues are, are not to be discussed at this, as part of this application. Anything else is fine, but not the boundary. Thank you. I'll keep off the boundary then. Um, your indications are that you've spoken to both sides and worked with both sides. Um, if the solar panels are moved more into the tennis court, round behind, would that be something that the landowner would be happy with? Yeah, catch the fielding. I can see where you're coming from, but we only have to consider what we have in front of us. Fair enough. Sorry about that. Don't worry, it's not the first time. Could you, um, have you got any pictures or anything else which Mr. Coyne might have, which would demonstrate the impact on your, um, not client, but your... We have the photographs that were sent in with their original objection to the planning department. So I have a copy of those, which I'm happy to share. Yeah, and again, because they've not been submitted, mm. we can't look at those, I'm afraid. Sorry. What were you hoping to see from the photos? Because I might be able to answer a question. Well, the visual impact. 
of where the location is from um, the objector's house. You could put the photos back up from Matthew's presentation. Can I just raise a point there, Chair, though, that in all fairness, even though I'm supporting both sides, that doesn't give a, a fair representation no, of I'm, the I'm, angle. I'm, I'm not yeah. making any decision one way or the other. I'm yeah. just trying to make it easier so people have got some visual representation of the matter. If you don't want it on, I have no problem. Matthew, just take it off so it's, it's not a problem at all. No, no. I'm just trying to be helpful. And I'm trying to remain impartial, so I'm you know, trying not to favour one side or the other, as, as a chairman should do. Councillor Skettle, are you OK with that? Yeah, yeah. Right. Any further questions? Right. Councillor O'Donnell, thank you very much. You're free to go. Right. And we'll go on to points of clarification to the officer. Any points of clarification? Councillor Kettle? Could you just remind me of what the distance is, separation distance is from the, the neighbour's property? I don't have it immediately in front of me, but I can measure it on the plan if you give me if you a could, couple of minutes. If you could, that'd be kind. Thank you. The, the, the distance from approximately there uh, and the line of sight through to the, where the array will be is about 32 metres. Sorry. About 32 metres from, from that point to that point on the screen. I'd, yeah, I've got one, one question. Um, I think Mr Whiteon mentioned that uh, it could be seen potentially from his neighbour's bedroom and on the statement that Councillor O'Donnell read out she indicated that it might be visible from the next door neighbour's living room. Is that right Councillor O'Donnell? Just nod. Yeah, that's yes fine. Yeah. Yeah, no that's fine. Yeah, thank you. Yeah. Could you just give us give some clarification? Sorry, uh, yeah, I don't have that information in front of me. The, the, the neighbour's property is here, um, and they... So the neighbouring property is here, uh, and there is, a, there is a line of sight through to the, to the siting of the, the solar panels. The, the neighbour did provide some um, correspondence with the application, um, as part of the consultation process, and there is a photo that shows a line of sight through to the to where the, the array will be. Yep. But I don't have that in front of me tonight, I'm afraid. Okay. Right, catch the fielding. I take it the panels are going to be sideways on, are they? To the so they're not going to be flat, so that they can be seen there. Well, it, it'll be in that sort of shape, um, an arrangement, and it'll be sort of length on, so yeah. side on to the... So you're looking, at, you're looking at the side of it, you're not looking at the there and the... The, the, the plan in front of you indicates that the, the long sides would be to the left and right, so the short end would be at the top and bottom of the screen. Okay. And what height are they at the back? What height are they at the back? So that... On the, on the frames itself, uh, the, there's a ver slight variation in height. So there's a minimum height and a maximum height. The minimum height to the frame, top of the frame is 2 metres, and the maximum height is about 2.5. Okay. 
Councillor Cattle. Thank you, Matthew. So, can we just go back to the, the, which way these, these things are facing? I'm looking here at the map on the planning application, um, which is the same as you've got up there. Where is north? Well, <laughs> well to, the, to the top of the screen is, is, a, is an indication. So, the, down here. the top of the picture is north, so yep. on the basis that they'll be facing south, they will be facing directly towards the neighbour's property, the, the black screen as opposed to the back side of it. The, the way that they're indicated on there seems to suggest that the, the, the narrower ends are this way, here and here, and the longer ends are this side. Uh, so they'll be facing towards the road. Can I suggest, Chris, you leave your thing vertically? No, if you take it vertically, then it's further away from your year. I've got any better problems with that. Yes, Chair, through the Chair. Um, the drawings we have do indicate the rectangle, which equates to the size to the um, to the solar panels, and the short side of, of the rectangle is is as shown on that on the drawing in front of you. Yes. So the neighbours will be looking at the side end. I will not have sight of the black glass of the actual panel itself. Uh, that is the conclusion that we've drawn, yes. Right. Shall we uh, move on to the debate? Who uh, would like to start on this one then? Councillor Fielding and Councillor Barnes. I can see no reason for refusing it. Um, if we allow for some planting to. Um, a bit of landscaping, I can't see any reason for refusing, and I'd like to, to propose that it be granted. Mm. I'll need to come back as well. Um, yeah. I feel similar. Uh, the applicant wanted to move it into the old tennis court. That would be an open countryside. That would be against policy. Uh, so as far as I'm concerned, I'm quite happy to go along with this officer's recommendation, whether it's proposing or seconding. Councillor Kettle, and then I'll, I'll come back to me. Yeah, I think when we, we, we've looked at um, large-scale solar farms, there has been legitimate concern about the impact of looking at uh, the glass and, and any potential reflection we might get off the glass. Um, here, I'm assured by the planning manager that what we're looking at, and, and thank you for having the slide on, is we're looking on the side impact, um, where if the applicant was so minded with a bit of careful landscaping, which in fact I don't know whether we might be able to... I'm just querying, checking what's in the improved plans, whether there's anything about landscaping. Kettle, you, you, thinking about, you mentioned something about landscaping, didn't you? Or was it Councillor Field? No, it was me. Um, yeah. When we've had these on a large scale solar plant, there have been objections about the impact of looking on at a significant area of glass and the, and the reflection ember that might have, and which has a significant change in, in this, or has a significant visual impact. Here, surprisingly, the way the plans are drawn, it would suggest, and I agree with your suggestion, that actually the panel is facing west, and therefore, in the event the side view is the one we have here, um, there would be an opportunity to minimise the impact on the neighbour by either some screening on the 
side, and I'm wondering whether that is something that we might be able to uh, con uh, condition, that there is some sort of screening, because there is no sun impact. Uh, some of you may know I do have panels at home. Um, there is no sun impact of having something on the side which would hide it from the neighbour. Is that something we could condition? Um, I'll let Karen come back up. Through you, Chair. Um, I'm not terribly clear on, on where you'd envisage the landscaping. Are we talking immediately to, to this area or between the two, the two properties? No, on no the I'm, I'm talking about ad actually adjacent to the, the panels themselves. Uh, so if you move your mouse up, stop there yep. and go left and right in that sort of direction, um, which is, we, we, we commonly see on new developments where you have a bin store, where you have some sort of fencing around it to make it more visually attractive. Um, and here, because the panels are facing west, uh, it could be designed, uh, any, any um, panelling could be designed not to impact or, or put any shadow over the panels themselves, but just minimise the view from the neighbour's window. It would be very minor, minor scale. I mean, the, the, the applicant might be quite happy to do it anyway, um, but it would, I think, minimise the visual impact. Uh, other than that, I would support, um, I would second council fielding proposal, but with that condition put in. Uh, I think perhaps if I draw your attention to, to um, this photograph, uh, the panels will sit in this area, approximately in this area. Uh, so we do have a, a, a change from tarmac to some of the surfacing um, that would enable, I think, potentially some landscaping. The only thing I draw your attention to is that the overall height, suggested height, is a minimum of two metres. So to, to uh, provide any robust landscaping, to provide screening, um, would you be looking for something at that sort of height? Because certainly we then get no potential overshadowing for the solar panels. No, I mean, I'm, I'm suggesting the panelling should be profiled so that it has no shadow impact on the screen itself, no. but actually provides some sort of barrier so that one's not looking at the supporting structure underneath it. Um, I'm, not, I'm not very strong, but I'm just trying to ease a way that would make it more acceptable to the neighbour if it could be easily achieved. If it can't be achieved, then... Um, so be it, I, I cannot see a planning reason why this should be refused, but we might be able to make it more acceptable in planning terms. It, it would provide, it could potentially provide some mitigation. Yeah. Uh, would we agree that? Would that be agreed? And just come in as a discharge of and that, would, that would be dealt with through a discharge of conditions, so we would attach the condition asking for um, a landscaping scheme to come in um, at the point, I think, uh, where the panels are, are about to be constructed, put on site, um, because otherwise we're in a pre-commencement position, um, and then we would deal with the, with the actual detailing of how that was, how the landscaping appeared um, at that point through a discharge application. Yeah. That's yeah. basically delegated to yourself. Then. Yes. Yep. Right then, catch the fielding. Um, you did the original proposal with the additional condition regarding landscaping, which we've sort of detailed, gone into more detail. You could easily put a fence, some sort of panel, I think and then plant something up. It's a, there are many ways of killing a cat. So I think, I think the condition was that a landscaping, a landscaping scheme that to be delegated to officers uh, for their approval. Um, I, I think a fence would be more appropriate. I think, I think if we give officers a degree of flexibility, they've like obviously heard our thoughts at, at the meeting, assuming we agree the recommendation. Um, and I think it gives them the flexibility to come up with something appropriate. If everybody's happy with that. Well, you need your proposal and seconder to confirm that, Chair. Are you uh, with the additional condition three? Yeah. Yep. And Councillor Kettle seconded? Well, I seconded. Seconded. You're happy to agree with that, Councillor Barnes? The painting, yes. 
Well, it was a screening, Chair. It's a screening. Screening, yes, OK. We'll leave all the details to the planning officer. Yeah. So we've had a proposal and a seconder for that proposal to grant subject to the additional condition that we've just talked about. All those in favour? That's unanimous, Chairman. Thank you. Council resolves to grant application 18 SAS 2218 FUL. We'll move on to our next item on the agenda, which is 19 slash 00395 FUL Blackwell House, Blackwell Shipston on Star. Proposed two storey, single storey re extensions and new front porch. Is it you again, Matthew? And Matthew's presenting again. Thank you, Chairman. Uh, yeah, so the application site is situated within the settlement of Blackwell. Uh, it's indicated by the black dot in the centre of the screen there. Uh, this slide just shows the, the site edged in red. Um, so there's two roads that bound the site. There's the Ilmington Road to the north, um, and then there's an unnamed road which goes along the south of the site. There's also a connecting road between the two that goes to the west western side, uh, the front elevation of the dwellings on this western side of the property, the gardens to the rear and to the east. Uh, there's a, a sort of a green open space beyond that. So this just shows the existing and proposed block plans. Um, so here you've got the, the proposed porch extension going in and then the proposed two-storey and single-storey rear extensions uh, to the east of the site. This slide shows the existing and proposed elevations. Again, you've got the, the new porch going on the front uh, on the western side. And then on the eastern side of the, the property, um, there's an existing um, small element of, of flat roof two-storey extension to the property. Um, and the plan is to extend that the full width of the house. Um, there's a number of other elements, such as a, a recessed stone opening um, that's uh, been blocked up to mimic a window, um, some render and some other openings as well. These are just the side elevations. Um, it's a bit difficult to tell from this plan, but the, the flat roof extension comes off of here. Um, so that roof is part of the existing gable that's set further back. Um, and that window's uh, reclaimed from the, the front porch, which is going in. Uh, so these perspective drawings just give a better feel for sort of the, the proposed extensions, particularly to the rear of the property. Um, again, so you've got the, the flat roof kind of continuing on from the existing, which kind of stops there at the moment. Um, and then a single story element going on at the back as well. Uh, this is the existing and float proposed floor plans. So these are some photos of the site. Um, so this is looking from the south and from the unnamed road. Um, so the extension would sort of come out of this area just here. Uh, and the new porch obviously going in this area. Uh, this is the existing... Yeah, sorry, this... Yep, just Sorry, yeah, yeah. So this is the existing two-storey uh, element of the building, um, and the extension will be going the full width of that um, at the same sort of depth. Uh, this is looking from the north of the site. Um, so again, you can just see the corner of the existing two-storey element here, um, and then that will come the full width of the property. Uh, and then again, that's looking from the Ilmington Road from the north back towards the dwelling. Um, again, the extension sort of going in that area there. Uh, it's just a street view to get a feel for it. Obviously, this is taken at a different level to the, the street itself, uh, but it gets a feel for the sort of the openness at the back of the property there. Okay, so there's a detailed uh, explanation of the, the issues on starting on page 17 of your agenda pack. Uh, it's recommended for one, one reason for refusal, and that's on page 20 of your agenda. Thank you. Thank you, Matthew. And can we have our first speaker, which is Councillor Julie Murphy, please, from Treddington Parish Council. And apologies for the uh, not being able to hear, so sorry about that. So, we might give you a little few extra seconds to, if you do need to clarify a few points that you didn't quite hear. Okay. So you have got three minutes, but I might give you a little bit more leeway to uh, take into account the technical issues we were having. Okay, thank you. Can you hear me? So, as one of the three parish councillors who reviewed this planning application, we concluded the visual impact from the north and south of the property due to the typography of the site, with high brick walls, mature trees and outbuildings, ensured no adverse impact on amenities or neighbouring properties, so it would be acceptable to policy CS20 of the core strategy. 
Blackwell House is a much loved property in the village with frontage on the green. As locals, we consider the back extension designed to be its sensitive and complementary to the building with use of appropriate materials. If at any time it might be merely glimpsed when passing, we considered it to have no visual impact on the overall character of Blackwell or indeed the house itself and in accordance with policy CS9. Much has been made to suggest that the 1.5 metre flat roof projection would be harmful in the committee report. This I would consider suggestive, subjective, given the report has also agreed location materials fit the criteria for both policy CS9 and CS20. It is always also worth noting no objections have been raised by neighbours. To put this into context, as a resident of Blackwood for, for, for six years myself, that lives opposite the site on the north of the Elmington Road and faces the bottom of the garden, it was actually quite a revelation to find that the property had a, an existing flat roof extension, which I could only just view from my be front bedroom window if I leaned out. This would also be true should the proposed uh, extension be granted um, for the um, roof. On this basis, we would ask consideration to, give, uh, to grant the application. And that's all I had to say. Thank you. Thank you. Any questions for the Lord Member? Councillor Barn. Yes, I noticed one is a thatched building, so that's listed. What are the others that are adjacent who, who appear to be running in line with the uh, application? So, um, the, to my knowledge, there isn't a thatched building near to the property. So oh. you have, um, I think, uh, so I, I'm number one and um, number two... Number are, one is up on the top. So, left -hand side. yes. Yeah. So... Okay, yes, okay. So that, there is a, thatch co a, a house called Thatched Cottage, but it's not a thatched cottage. Oh, I saw the sign. To be, to be clear, yes, I understand what you meant now, sorry. Okay. Yeah. Well, there you go. I, sorry, I incorrectly called you the ward member before. I know you're the, you're the parish councillor, so apologies for that. And no, apologies that, for Councillor Harvey Mr. as well. Harvey. Yes, I know, yes, so I, I just apologise for that. For that was a yes. councillor fielding. Uh, you, you referred to the photograph we got of the house showed that there was a tree on the roadside. So these trees, do they, they, they protect your line of view from your property? Yes, very much so. So um, there's a very mature um, cherry tree which completely obscures my view of the house. So um, it was interesting, these photos were sent to the parish council as well to look at. Um, and this is one of the parts where you may just glimpse. But because of the, the height of the um, verge, you very much don't see the property at all, in, in my opinion a brief glimpse. Also it's worth noting that um, both uh, Mr Turner has also planted some very nice pleach trees along to mature as well. So he's done some landscaping around that property? Yes, absolutely. So, Councillor Kettle? Just in that photograph, what is that wall with the ivy growing on, which presumably the peach trees are on the far side of, what's that wall made of? Is it concrete? Um, it's a mixture of sort of concrete and render. I think originally, it, many years ago, it was probably the same as all of the very old um, style walls in the village with the cat roof, and I think parts of it have been mended over time. Okay, thank you. Thank you. Um, yeah, how do you say you had the opportunity to comment on that photo at the Parish Council? Um, is the applicant been in touch with you on a regular basis? Have you had any dialogue with the applicant about this uh, application? No, well, not, not other than we as three parish councillors. Obviously, I'm a neighbour of, of Mr Turner's, but um, he, didn't he didn't approach us at all. We viewed it separately, as we do all, and we always have three different councillors look at it from different villages. Thank you very much. Thank you. Councilor Murphy, you're free to go. Thank you. And can we have our next speaker, which is Mrs Edwina Turner.
Good evening, Mrs. Turner. You've got three minutes. And we'll give you a shout with about 30 seconds to go if, you're, if you need it. You're sorry, I am a bit deaf. No, I can't hear you very well. Sorry. Would you like a warning with about 30 seconds to uh, go? No, I, I, I won't be speaking for the full three minutes. Thank you. Okay, that's fine. Thank you very much. Far away when you're ready. Um, good evening to the committee. Um, with reference to the character and appearance of the area around Blackwell House, the surrounding properties are a mixture of styles and periods, including two 60s bungalows and other unremarkable houses. One of these bungalows, Celsia, also has a flat roof. Thatched cottage at the eastern boundary is in fact built of concrete, with a concrete tiled roof, as indeed is the existing roof of Blackwell House. The hamlet of Blackwell is not in an area of outstanding natural beauty, hence we have a business park, a solar farm and a wedding venue. Last year, we tried unsuccessfully to sell our house, and the main stumbling points for prospective purchasers were the lack of a utility and an ensuite to the master bedroom, something they would expect in a house of this size. Our architect addressed these factors and designed a scheme which provides a well laid out and, in our opinion, an aesthetically pleasing family house. We are not massive fans of flat roofs, but felt that hiding it behind a parapet wall and the contrast rendering softened the appearance and helped to define this as an extension to accord with local design guides. Certainly none of our neighbours have raised objections, and in any case the rear of the property is well screened by pleach trees and a large fir tree, plus a cherry tree on the north side, a high laurel hedge to the east, and a separate building on the south side. There will be very little visibility beyond the boundaries. We hope you will look favourably on our application, as we feel it provides a cost-effective solution to the accommodation problem, whilst remaining an attractive property on the green. If, however, you have any outstanding queer queries, we would be happy for a site visit. Thank you. Thank you, Mrs. Turner. Any questions? Councillor Fielding. I gather you've been planting some beech trees around. How, how long ago? Bear in mind, most of us are deaf anyway, so we can't always hear it. <laughs> yeah. and they were planted uh, either la yeah, last year, I think. And what sort of height were they? They were put in... At my husband probably knows more than me. I think they're probably about six foot, I think. So they're, they're fairly substantial. Well, they're still saplings. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But, but they will uh, yeah. mature. Yes. <laughs> Any further questions? No, Mrs. Turner? Oh, just in time there, Councillor Kettle. Is, will there be any access onto the flat roof from beneath um, so that it could be used for um, sunbathing or anything else like that? No, no, that definitely isn't the attention. The, there is um, a, an extension, the existing flat roof um, comprises a, a bathroom upstairs and downstairs it's a little vestibule. And so the, the idea is that it's just an extension of that along the back of the house. But people won't be sitting out. Sorry? In, people won't be sitting out in sun chairs or deck chairs or. No. <laughs> right. This time you are free to go. Thank you very much. Okay. Thank you. And our next speaker is Councillor Harvey, who is the ward member. <laughs> and I believe you've got a presentation as well. See you You've got five minutes. So feel free to start when you're ready and we'll give you a shout with about 30 seconds to go. Thank you, Mr Chairman. The case officer has recommended that this, this application should be refused based on her interpretation that the proposed extension is not consistent with the requirements of CS9 and CS20 of the core strategy. On her interpretation, the flat roof of the proposed extension, quote, is highly visible from the wider area, and it would, quote, jar with the traditional pitched roof of the main house, presenting an incongruous addition on a prominent elevation. I suggest that this interpretation is unreasonable. I'll set out in a series of photographs why I think this is the case. Photograph one shows the western elevation of Blackwell House. 
The intended extension would lie to the rear of the house and could not, therefore, be seen from this view. Photograph 2 is taken from the driveway of Manor Farm House and shows the current southern elevation. The property's existing flat roof is evident. This is the only view of the house where a member of the public will be able to see accurately the projected depth of the proposed extension. Please note the structure on the right of the photograph. Photograph 3 is taken in the same road. It shows that when the property is viewed from the street at the bottom of the garden, Blackwell House is completely obscured, predominantly by the two-storey building seen in photograph two that forms the southern boundary of the property. Photograph four is taken from the rear of the property, looking down the garden towards Thatched Cottage. The view from Thatched Cottage is completely obscured at ground level by a thick hedge. Although you can't see it in the photograph, there are no windows in this elevation at second floor level. The proposed extension would not, therefore, be capable of being seen from such cottage. Photograph 5 demonstrates the corresponding street scene taken on the north side in Ilmington Road from the bottom of the property's garden. The view of Blackwell House is significantly limited by a combination of a wall, shrubbery, and a large tree. Photograph six is taken from the north on the driveway of the house named Celsior. It best illustrates the current elevation seen from the street and is dominated by the gable end of the existing pitched roof. The flat roofed area of the proposed extension would extend to about half the width of the existing eastern elevation. The question for members, I suggest, is would these pictures taken together lead a reasonable person to judge that the proposed extension was going to be, in the words of the case officer, highly visible from the wider area? I suggest they do not. My second point is that there is already a precedent in Blackwell for an extension to a house that incorporates a flat roof and that it is immediately adjacent to Blackwell House. Photograph 7 is of the eastern elevation of Celsius, a property that lies on the northern side of Ilvington Road and opposite Blackwell House. The photograph shows that the original pitched roof of this house has been extended. Note the change in the colour of the brickwork by the addition of a flat roof extension to the garage. Photograph 8 shows that this flat roofed extension extends across the width of a double garage, a distance that is not dissimilar to the width of the proposed extension to Blackwell House. Finally, photograph 9 shows that Celsius also has a porch built with a flat roof, an extension for which this council also granted planning permission. Blackwell House is not a listed building, it doesn't lie in a con conservation area, and no local residents have raised any objection to this application. I believe that the photographs presented have demonstrated first that the visual impact of the proposed extension cannot, on a reasonable interpretation, be regarded as being highly visible from the wider area. And second, 30 seconds. that the general acceptability of a flat roof to a property in this village is evident in the extensions already permitted and the precedent set by the previous decisions of this council. I ask therefore that the Planning Commission be granted as requested. Thank you, Chairman. Thank you, Councillor Harvey. You're spot on. It's all like to see. Right, questions for the ward member, please. I've got one whilst you're thinking. Uh, I think it's photograph four. Oh, no, it's the other one. Five. No, it's, no the, the one with the hedge. That, that one. No, that one. Um, obviously, the hedge is uh, very good for screening from for the two properties. Um, do you know the ownership of the hedge? Whose who's boundary is it on? No. No. I don't know. I'm sure the owners will know one way or the other. I can... That, but that's a laurel hedge, and that isn't our boundary. The laurel hedge is... Too, is um, so our boundary is beyond that hedge. Uh, yes. 
So it's about hedges within the curtilage of our property. Yep. No. So, yeah, that's fine. Yep, brilliant. Thank you for that. That's a very good intervention there. That's most kind. Kenneth the Kettle, did you indicate? No? Yes? Um, yeah, I mean, it appears there, if, if we could go back to um, the cottage, one of those pictures, previous one, not that one, not that one, not that one. That one. No, stop. Go forward, that one. Is that the proper, is that the thatched cottage? No, that is taken from uh, the unnamed road, from the bottom of the garden, looking back towards Blackwell House. Blackwell House lies over the ridge of that two-story building. Right, so that, that is the right house I want to talk about. What is the impact on this development on that house, which is not thatched cottage? Is there any that's significant... That's a that, that, that forms part of, of Blackwell House. So that's, that's an outbuilding. It's an outbuilding. outbuilding. Two story outbuilding. It's Super. theirs. Right. So we've got there eventually, that's good. Council of Arms. We are assuming that that is at the bottom of the garden. Yes. That's right. So it's like, if you like outbuildings, it could be anything. Think. Uh, when I was taking the photographs, I was at pains to make sure I found the bottom edge of the garden and took the photograph from the, the corner of their plot. No, that's fine. So you had to stand on one leg, did you, to do that, did you? No, well, I'm in the middle of the road doing that. Yeah. Right. And I think he's done a wonderful job. <laughs> yeah. Right. Um, any further questions, or can the ward member disappear? I think you are free to, free to go, Councillor Howie. Thank you very much. Right. Points of clarification to the officer. Councillor to the fielding. Um, two things. One is that the government have recently brought out the fact that you can extend your property to the rear. I don't know whether that is now uh, um, policy, but I would have thought then the other one would be permitted development. Are they, are either of them... Could either of them be made acceptable in this case? Under the permitted development legislation, um, the, the, the bit that you're referring to that's been extended uh, this year, that's single-storey extensions. Um, there is scope for some two-storey elements, but this scheme wouldn't be permitted development, so there is no fallback in this, in this position. The government policy on developing to the rear of buildings, is that acceptable in this case? I mean, it, it, they could do a, a development under permitted development, uh, potentially, uh, but that would have to be assessed, and what they're proposing under this scheme isn't permitted development, so they wouldn't be able to do this scheme without planning permission. Councillor Kirtle? Um, I was going to bring up the matter of permitted development rights, Matthew, not in relation to the rear extension, but the front extension. Um, would that be permitted if it... I know it's not a standalone, but I just... Um, I, I'd have to have a look. Um, porches do fall within perm permitted development rights, so you can do normally up to three square metres, certain to certain height limits, but without having a look against the regulations, I wouldn't be able to say whether this porch fell within those. Through you, Chair. Um, the report does, in fact, indicate that the officer has no issues with the porch. Yeah, OK, thank you, thank you very much. Awesome. Uh, we're going to the debate. Who wants to cancel the Barnes? Are you willing to start them? Debate. Yeah. Well, Either I'm going daft or something, but I can't see anything wrong in it. Uh, it looks to me there's plenty of space for all the extra bits. Um, no windows protruding over anything else. Um, I would like to see bird boxes, included in the... Uh, uh, and bat boxes included in the conditions because as far as I'm concerned it's an ideal place for that type of animal to grow um, so I'm only too happy to propose 
the development is approved. Councillor Cattle. Um, I think Councillor Harvey's um, comments about um, the impact are, are, are very apt on this one. Um, and if we look at CS20, paragraph B, alterations and modifications of existing buildings and dwellings, including proposed extensions, will be of appropriate scale and subservient in relation to the existing building. I think quite clearly here we're not talking about a huge uh, change in the, uh, in the volume of this property. Um, so in my eyes that is subservient um, in relation to the existing building, taking into account site location and cumulative impact. Um, I'm not sure what other extensions we've, we've, asked, on the, we've asked about on this one, but um, it hasn't been raised. If we go to CS9, um, this is adding to the quality of the property. Is, it, is the design strikingly different to the existing property? Um, I think the way that you've got white walls which reflect the front of the house and the far side of the house um, very much reflect the existing style. Um, it uh, continues the format that's already there. And the only thing I'm slightly um, sticks out to me is the if we're looking at the picture in front of us, the bottom left picture, that white block. Um, but since we've been assured, it is on. Um, We've been assured it can't be seen by anybody else. This will be private to the property holder and it can only be seen from their garden. So the impact it will have on anybody else will be, will be zilch. Um, I mean, yes, you can see it from there, Matthew, you're quite right, but it'll be, it'll be no different, in, in effect, to um, who you've moved. <laughs> on that one, you've got a, a thumping great white wall uh, there. It's just a slightly more modern feature of the way it's been designed, but I, d I don't find that incongruous. Uh, so I think under both CS9 and CS20 um, that um, the impact will be both of a quality design and um, the alteration and modification of the CS20 pa paragraph B, uh, it complies with that policy. I'm not quite sure where you put back boxes, though, if Mr Barnes wants back we can, boxes. We can talk about conditions shortly. Councillor Fielding? Uh, I will join Councillor Barnes on going daft. Um, uh, I couldn't possibly switch. agree. <laughs> CS9 sensitivity is distinctive. Uh, I can't see any other reason. It is sensitive to the building as a whole. I agree on 20B. Um, that is... Um, again for small alteration or alterations on the properties. Um, the, it's unfortunately the photographs were taken in winter so it gives a false picture okay for th th four or five months of the year you're going to see it but at the same time in summer and the spring it, it, it loses into the background. So I've got I will uh, also second or third whatever anybody wants on this particular scheme but I think we've got CS9 and CS20 um, in, in its favour. So I'm getting the flavour from the committee that basically you're disagreeing with the officer who said it would introduce a prominent and incongruous feature so you're saying it wouldn't uh, and you're saying the property wouldn't harm the character and appearance of the existing house or the visual appearance and the character and appearance of the locality. So you're, you're saying you're disagreeing with the officer's recommendations? I, I think enhance is the word. Yeah, so you're basically saying that it will enhance or you're... Yeah. When I first saw the, the images with... The uh, planning officer, I, I, I was against it, but seeing the trees and the photographs that Councillor Harvey's produced, um, it makes a big difference to my opinion on it. Councillor Hanson, sir. I, know, I see no objection to this uh, planning application at all. So you're, you'll be supporting? The yeah. yeah. Councillor Fleming? Um, I agree with the other ward members and uh, the other members of the committee. I see no reason to refuse this at all. So, if the committee wanted to, um, to grant, let me need some conditions, Jay. Yep. Um, 
Right then, Karen. We, it seems like we seem to be moving towards a, a grant. And the reasons we carry she's happy with that. Are you happy with the... Um, Can we just list you out the suggested reasons? That would suggested be... Suggested conditions. Reasons and conditions. Are you happy with the reasons for the support of the application? Yes, okay. yeah, so in terms of reasons, you'll be looking at um, CS20 and CS9 um, being in keeping with the character of the area and the main dwelling. Uh, yeah, being in, in keeping with the character of the area and the main dwelling. Um, so that there'll be reasons for approval. Um, and then draft conditions, I've got uh, the standard time uh, limit plan um, in terms of three years uh, in accordance with the approved plans. Um, we'd be looking for details of the finishes for the windows to be submitted, uh, matching materials uh, f for the main house. Um, there's one about uh, the first floor uh, side facing window that that is planned to be reclaimed from the front of the house um, when they're putting the porch in and they're going to reuse the window around there but it does serve a bathroom so if members are minded we would recommend that that's obscurely glazed um, and then it's whether or not you want to include a condition about bird or back boxes Councillor Fielding I think Councillor Barnes did bring up the matter of ecology Back boxes and swift boxes. Is it not an unreasonable well, I was wondering whether everybody knows, but every new house in my area has to have a, black, a, a box, two homes for the price of one. Do you want that to right? um, By the river, there's swifts. In the town, there's, swall you know, there's sparrows. So it usually depends on Warwickshire ecology, which type of bird you look after. Boxes. And you can have bad boxes, yep. but they have to be in the sunlight because birds die in the sunlight, young birds do, whereas bats don't. Thank you very much for that. That's Matthew, um, can you come back on the birds issue and bats? Yeah, so in terms of, of that issue, uh, the county ecologist has suggested using informatives um, but hasn't recommended any conditions uh, as this is an extension to an existing dwelling and doesn't affect any roof space of an existing dwelling. I'd probably say it was I've got 480 in my back. Yep, so if everybody's happy, we'll, we'll be in reasonable. We'll put an informative rather than uh, make it a part of the condition. So... Subject to all the conditions, we've had a proposer and a seconder, and the reasons, and the reasons that um, we've, we've agreed. Um, we've got a proposer and a seconder. All those in favour of granting the application, please indicate. Yes. Oh, I've got a pink one. Right, committee resolves to grant application 19-00395-FUL. Um, thank you for your cooperation on that one. It's very really helpful. Next item on the agenda is start time of meetings. It, it varies. I, I can be reasonably flexible. Uh, today was uh, an exception, so it did help. Um, but it's, it's all dependent on the members of the committee who are here. Um, 6.15. I'm using another one to go to 6.15 and then we've got both committees going at the same time. Yeah, probably, probably what helps 6.15 for me just in case. <laughs> <laughs> Depends if you keep quiet, counts the kettle. Um, so, 6.15, all those in favour? Yeah. Yep. Unanimous. Unanimous. Right, we have no items of urgent business, so I will close the meeting. But before you go, before we go, we will be having a training session, a small training session, just to ensure things run smoothly in the future. So, I'm being to be finished at 20 past 7. No, Karen is. Yeah, I don't know.